Hey YouTube, welcome to the IPv4 Subnetting Mastery video series. Welcome to video 6. In this video, we will show you how to apply the method learned in previous videos to subnetting problems in the third octet. This is the subnetting cheat sheet we've been using for the first 5 videos. To learn more about how to draw the first 3 rows, check out video 2. The last step to drawing this cheat sheet was to list out all CIDR notations from slash 32 through slash 25. To extend the cheat sheet to include the third octet, all you have to do is continue where we left off. We ended on a slash 25, so we will continue with a slash 24 on the next row. With this extension, we can use the cheat sheet to solve subnetting problems in the third octet. We will show you how with three example problems. The process for solving subnetting problems in the third octet is largely the same as what we've been doing. Notice the seven steps we've used in prior videos remains mostly unchanged. The one exception is solving for the number of IPs. We will show you how that works shortly. Our first example problem will be 10.4.77.188/19. Just like before, we will start by using the setter notation to find our column in the cheat sheet. We were given a slash 19, which puts us in this column. Next, we will convert between subnet mask and setter notation. The subnet row in our column provides us with a value of 224. But remember, we are now in the third octet, which means we will still use the value of 224, but it now appears in the third octet. A slash 19 in CIDR notation equates to the subnet mask of 255.255.224.0. Every value to the left of the pertinent subnet value will always be 255, and every value to the right will always be 0. Next, we will locate the group size, which for us is 32, and we will increment by this value in the relevant column. But since a slash 19 is in the third octet, the third octet is our relevant column. This is the column we will use for our increment, starting from dot 0, in sets of 32 until we pass the target of 77. So we'll have dot zero, dot 32, dot 64, dot 96, and at this point we've passed our target of 77 and we can stop. This completes all the values in the third octet. We can fill in the remaining octets by bringing down the values from our target IP for the first two octets and using dot zero for the fourth octet. And with that, we've completed the hard part. From this point, the process is identical to what we've done before. The IP addresses before and after our target IP are our network ID and next network. The IP addresses before our next network is the broadcast IP. Since our next network was 10.4.96.0, our broadcast IP would be 10.4.95.255. The IP address after our network ID is the first host, and the IP address before our broadcast IP is the last host. And finally, we get to the number of addresses. The easiest way to solve for the number of addresses is to use what is sometimes called 2 to the n notation. The way it works is to take your CIDR notation and subtract it from 32, then raise 2 to the power of that value. For us, we were given a slash 19, so we would take 32 minus 19, which gets us 13, then take 2 and raise it to the power of 13. This gives us a total number of addresses of 8192. Keep in mind, on a certification exam, it would be rare to be asked to calculate the number of IP addresses for a subnetwork this large without a calculator. And just like that, we've completed the process to solve for all seven attributes using the same seven steps and cheat sheet as before. Our second example problem will be 10.4.235.99/21. It'll start the same way as before. We will use the provided CIDR notation to find our respective column in the cheat sheet. Our column provides us a subnet mask value of 248, and since we're in the third octet, this value will appear in the third octet. Then we'll locate our group size, which is eight and increment in the third octet in sets of eight starting from dot zero. So we would have dot zero, dot eight, dot 16, dot 24, dot 32, and we could continue, but it would take us a long time to get to 235. But remember all those speed tips we learned in video five? We don't actually need to start at dot zero. We can just start at dot 224 and continue incrementing in sets of eight from here, giving us dot 232, dot 240, and at this point, we've passed our target IP of 235 and we can stop. We can complete the remaining columns, and from here, we can simply fill in the attributes as we've done many times before. To solve the total number of addresses, we would take 32 and subtract our CIDR notation of 21, giving us 11, then take 2 raised to the power of 11 to get us 2048. And that takes care of our second example problem. We have one left in this video. Our final example problem will be 10.4.211.66-18. As before, the CIDR will give us our column in the cheat sheet, and our column will give us the subnet mask. 
The group size for a slash 18 is 64, and we'll increment by 64 starting from dot zero in the third octet. This gives us dot 64, dot 128, dot 192, dot 256. But wait, 256 is not a valid value in an IP address. We encountered this in video four. Instead, we need to set that octet to dot zero and increment the next octet by one, taking us from 10.4.192.0 to 10.5.0.0, at which point we've passed our target IP and can start filling in values just like before. The process from here continues exactly as it has in the past, subtracting and adding one as appropriate to identify the seven attributes of subnetting. For the number of IP addresses, we were given a CIDR of 18, so we would take 32 minus 18 to give us 14, and 2 raised to the power of 14 gives us 16,384 IP addresses. We've just completed three example problems that required subnetting in the third octet. That last problem, despite the explanations, still only took us about 60 seconds. Hopefully by now, you can see how the process for subnetting in the third octet is largely the same as it was for the fourth octet. In the next video, we'll extend the process to the first and second octets. 